called the Avengers Initiative. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people to see if they could become something more, see if they could work together when we needed them to, to fight the battle that we never could. Bill Colson died still believing in that idea. Well, it's an old fashioned adventure. Oh, there we go. We're on. I forgot yeah, to hit loop, hit loop. I forgot to hit we're, the loop button. Loop. Whoops. <laughs> so. Um all right, guys, thank you for joining us on our magnificent Tuesday podcast. I'm here joined with Fred and our special guests. I mean, I mean, no introduction, right? But go ahead and feel free. Me? Hi. Yes. I didn't know if it was Fred's introduction. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Tara Sands. I'm a voice actor. That is why I sit in this room of foam. Uh, and uh, I, I basically, I talk a lot. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll get into um, what shows and stuff, but that's me. Nice. Thank you for joining us, sir. I appreciate it very much. So, um, again, guys, uh, thank you for joining us on our podcast on this beautiful Tuesday. Let's see what we got in the comments going on. We've got Juan Campos coming in so hyped. So Juan's actually our other business partner. There's three of us. So hi Juan. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's, uh, he's uh, you have to you have to have the nerd of the business. So if someone actually knows oh, all that kind of stuff. Oh, so he's he the is. only nerd? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, he he knows majority of the stuff like towards yeah. the anime side. Like we have okay. our own like things that we stick to, but he's more of like their anime advisor, you would say. Advisor. So what's your okay? So. I'm going to turn this interview around then. Sorry. So, David and Fred, what is your major nerddom then? Like, what is each of you? Which one? Comics? I do comics, yeah. yeah. Both of you are comics. Okay. Yeah. Mine's mine's Pez. Pez? Pez. Mm Mm-hmm. Like the old school Pez's or like the new school? Or you just everything. I have a, uh, yeah, just a collector of You have a whole wall full of Pez's. I, it's in a box right now. It used to be all over the place, but (laughs) that is my geekiness, so... Nice. Is, wow. yeah. We've got Alex that's here as well. And we have Armando. Armando is actually the event Hi, organizer. He's the one uh, doing the one in Mercedes for the Saturday show. Okay. So oh. if, if you guys don't know, we're I'm going to be in Edinburgh and Mercedes. When is it? August 26th at Mercedes 26th. and the 27th. 27th. Okay. So come yeah. hang out. Yeah, for sure. So it'll be good. So Armando's excited. I'm excited. We're all excited. I'm not going to lie. I know we had the hiccup a few years back, right? So I know. We had a, a hiccup, but were... I'm getting there this time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Juan is getting his Digimon signed. Yeah, right. Ooh. Nice. Cool. I'm telling you, he knows everything. Everything about So you're anime. a Digimon person and not a Pokemon person, Juan, huh? Okay. No judgment. You can love them all. <laughs> That's very true. So um, we'll just get started with it. So, you know, I don't want to go too much into everything. But, um, you know, what, um, I mean, obviously we talked about you collecting Pez. So, you know, for me, I'm not going to lie to you, complete transparency. I, um, I started off with Pokemon cards, but not so much for myself. Uh, my dad worked at an arcade. He would get them from the prize guy, and then I sold them for money because, you know. Oh, smart. I, yeah, I was you know, <laughs> hustling, you know. Okay. No, that's ambitious. I like yeah. that. Okay. And that was like my, my little nine-year-old self selling things. And, um. I was going to ask you, what got you into, like, collecting originally? Like, what was it that was about Pez that you enjoyed, that you liked, or what's the story behind that? You know, I started collecting, like, before eBay and all that. So I had, like, maybe five or ten Pez, and I was like, I I don't even know how to explain it, but I just was like, I want a collection. And I was like, I have a bunch of these. Let me start going to, like, flea markets and antique stores and, and seeing what I could find. And I loved the challenge of it. And now there's not as much. Now it's more about money. Um, the challenge is a little bit gone from it. Um, I loved, like, I lived in New York City at the time, and I loved finding um, really rare stuff that, like, people didn't know what they had, or or there were some great antique. It, it got me going into antique stores I never would have gone gone into. Um, and I had just moved to New York, so it, that was sort of the fun of it. Would that was the fun of it. Now it's sort of just like, oh, you have to get online as soon as like an exclusive goes on sale or you can just go to eBay and spend money, which is not as much fun. True. Yeah. Is there any like one pet that you just haven't gotten to or one that's like your your prize, like, you know, that that one that you want to get? 
there's not specifically someone. This is so dorky. So I was just at a convention this past weekend and somebody had me sign a Pez dispenser. And what I knew it was for a real collector because the real collectors get their Pez dispenser signed. They open it up and you sign on the white part inside. And I said, oh, I'm a I'm a collector, too. And she goes, oh, my God, my dad is her dad happened to be one of like the world's biggest collectors. So she put me on FaceTime with him and he had a room. I mean, it was cover. It was the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and um, he had some Rolling Stones Pez that I just didn't even know about. I mean, I'm not as up to date as it could be. So I looked online, so I'm going to order these Rolling Stones Pez that I didn't know about. So that's my name. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, we got Alice coming in with Kara, right? Oh, Kara from Digimon. Yes, that is that is correct. And then we got JJ from Digimon we're... Adventure Try. I always have to specify only from Adventure Try. And then there's a new Digimon that will be on Hulu July 1st. And I'm playing Biomon in that one. So it is a little bit confusing. <laughs> no. And then we get Eliza Campos. This is actually a uh, friend of JJ's mom. FYI. Oh, hi. I consider her my mom too, but she gets mad at me more. So she, she's, the, she's, the she's the store mom. She's, she's, yeah, the, store she's mom. the store mom. Yeah. You gotta have one. Yeah. Oh. So, so, but um, that's awesome. So you collect a lot of Pez, um, so Rolling Stones. So you're into the, a lot of the music, a lot of the classic rock. Classic rock, yeah. Yeah. That's, what's that's your favorite band? My... Is it the Rolling Stones? It's. I mean, I'm Springsteen fan. I don't have like a. I'm not. I'm just not as into music because now I listen to podcasts and mm -hmm. Sirius XM, so I'm so behind on music, which is embarrassing and bad. But I wish I had a better answer. What's your okay? So, what's your uh, your like go to when you're gonna get on the plane? Because I have like a song because I have to. Hype oh, you do? Because like I don't like play. I don't like not being in control. It's like my thing. So, oh, you're not a good flyer. Okay, 100%. okay. <laughs> I'm. I just have to have good TV shows to watch. Really? Um, okay. like on this last flight, I watched uh, Jury Duty on Amazon Prime, which is like this reality show where it's um. It's a documentary about a jury, but only one person. They're all actors except one person. Okay. And it is awesome. I recommend it so much. But yeah, so I don't have a, like a psych up song, but I need to have good TV to watch. What's your psych up song? You know, um, so it's it's like it's headstrong trap. You know, just because like you know <laughs> things, things can happen. Like I'm not gonna lie, like. I'm not bougie or nothing, you know, like I like to fly, you know, first class economy, whatever it is. But I always have the concept because like, you know, in Minot and McAllen, when we go on United, they're smaller planes, you know, and I'm yeah, like, I hate those. And I'm like, you know, like if something happens, like I ain't gonna make it like, <laughs> like see, I like that if something happens, it's not my fault. Like, <laughs> like the worst <laughs> scenario, like it's bad if I go down, but like. I get more scared. I'd be scared if I was flying the plane. But if it's out of my hands, I'm like, all right. I don't have to worry. It's your time is it's your time. There you go. That's totally it. It's the <laughs> pilot's fault. Like I just don't yeah. wouldn't want to be responsible. Very good. So, um, one of the things I want to talk about. So, I know you did a lot of voice acting. Uh, so, what kind of drove you to that? Like, why did you pick voice acting as a career path uh, for per se? I mean, this is going to sound so cheesy, but it sort of picked me. Uh, I know it's really dumb, but I was doing every, I mean, I was, I went to college. I was a theater major. Um, I started voice acting. I was in high school. I was in a local singing competition at the Y in like sophomore year or something, junior year. I don't remember. Um, and there was an agent there and uh, she's like, I want to send you out in auditions for like theater and TV and commercials and all that. And the first audition she happened to send me on was, uh, was a voiceover job. And I didn't even know what a voiceover was. And I, and I booked it and I was like, Oh, cool. And I kept, you know, I kept doing theater and all that stuff in New York for many, many years before I moved to LA and, uh, the voice and even, you know, I've had a nice career doing, um, on camera stuff and things that I've really jobs I've really loved. Um, but the voiceover stuff is what I kept coming back to and it's what kept me the busiest yep. and I kept you know it's not fun to not work so I was like you know what if I just really focus on this I'll I'll probably work more and it worked out and I'm very lucky I know how lucky I am um and you know hopefully I'm not replaced by robots soon <laughs> <laughs> That's... What's the um uh, I know that 
one of your first gigs was uh for like a medicine cream or something, right? That was my first. Yeah, it was compound W wart cream, and I said something like, "Ew, gross, a wart," and uh, that was that first audition. And I was like, in my, I remember my mom like she's like, "They're paying you for that? Great, <laughs> Let's start saving for college." Uh, so yeah, so I, and then I started doing audiobooks and commercials and just all different kinds of kinds of voiceover work. So how does that voice work? Like the voiceover, like, do you reach out? Do they reach out to you? Do you like, are you very specific about it? Or like job's a job type of thing or? Job's a job. Yeah. I mean, when you're freelance, <laughs> I mean, listen, there's stuff that I wouldn't do, but you know, it would have to be very offensive for me not to do it. But um, I love to work and I need to work. So mm -hmm. it works, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let, I audition as much as I can. Um, right before we started doing this, I was, uh, recording auditions i get most of them from my agent sometimes a friend will send me an audition uh but that it's you know it's a sometimes and sometimes you get cast you audition for something and they pick you for a different role than you auditioned for uh which is great too or sometimes you just get a role because you've worked for someone many times and they just know your voice so i i take what you know audiobooks i don't tend to audition for um that's sort of they they use your prior work as your audition a lot of the time so and that's that's very time consuming so i'm in my booth a lot doing that nice and uh what were some of the roadblocks that you came across i mean i know you were talking about your mom saying they paid you for that you know like was that like your motivation or did you have a lot of people saying like that's that, that's what you want to do like for the rest of your uh, time I will say there's a lot of people, a lot of actors that I knew who, you know, took themselves. Oh, my mom, my mom is calling right now. <laughs> I'm doing a podcast, mom. Um, uh, like a lot of people, I, I think it's like she knew. I think some people looked down on it and they, they fancied themselves like serious actors. And uh, those people uh, in recent years have come back and said, so how do I get into that? <laughs> um <laughs> I think it's gained a lot of respect over the years. I mean, even look at like celebrities um, didn't used to do commercials. That was beneath them. Now they're all doing commercials. Now they've kind of taken a lot of our commercials. So speaking of roadblocks, a lot of that uh, commercial work that used, used to um, be my bread and butter, like that was how I made a living for a long time. Um, a lot of celebrities are taking those campaigns, those voiceover jobs, and that's a bummer. Um, roadblocks are, you know, roadblocks, your voice, it's your whole life. So losing your voice for any reason is scary. Um, I'm really, I, you know, like if someone's like, let's go to this restaurant, I'm like, is it loud? Uh, so I'm that annoying person. Um, yeah. So those are kind of the, the roadblock. I mean, also there's periods when you just don't work. Um, those are, that's a roadblock, I guess, you know, and then you start thinking, I'm never going to work again. I've definitely had that feeling even after many many years of doing this um but luckily luckily i've i'm still working knock on things knock on whatever <laughs> and then what's it called so like when you go like out like you know concerts and karaoke are you very mindful i mean obviously right because you know. i so rarely do anything fun like that yeah <laughs> yeah oh i just coughed see that's an example um yeah, I am pretty careful with stuff like that. Or like there's times I've been at concerts or like on a roller coaster where I start to scream and I stop myself. It's so silly, but it's just like you get used to it. It's like I, I, I always think of like a hand model who's like suddenly in the garden and is like or like just doesn't do certain things. Like there's certain things I just am, I'm not going to do. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm a hand model. And they wear gloves all the time, which always looks a little weird. It's very Michael Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> so Fred, do you want to take the, the next segment here? Yeah. Um, what's the worst part of conventions? Like the yelling. Out, the yelling. <laughs> oh my yelling. gosh. The yelling is this weekend. I was in my home state of New Jersey. Woo woo. And uh they were having uh anime wrestling right behind us, and it was so oh. loud. Um you know, there's no like saying the worst but i feel very lucky to be attending conventions uh for the work i've done so it's hard to say the worst part i mean there are i've gotten yelled at for shows that someone didn't like the uh adaptation of uh, things like that i'm like <laughs> i didn't write it please stop yelling at me I just voice um, not my problem <laughs> i just i didn't do it i had nothing to do with that um 
so there, there's like little things like that. Um, or I just feel bad if I can't answer someone's question about a show because it was so long ago. Like sometimes people ask me very specific questions about a show from 20 years ago. And I just don't remember. Um, and I that makes me feel bad because I, I know that they waited to, to ask that question and they would love a good answer. Um, but I'd rather not pretend I don't have, you know, know what, what it is. Um, so the worst part is is tough to say. I just the tra I mean the worst part is the travel. I just tweeted that I wish I could teleport cuz <laughs> that would just change everything. If I could the, the flights are just uh, uh well, you're like me when you see delayed on the app you're just like <sighs> oh I just start yeah it's all uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's happening a lot lately. So I, I always try to <laughs> try to get a direct flight even mm -hmm. if it's like times I don't want but yeah. Ah, yeah, no I think fun. the last time I got delayed, we were on the runway for American Airlines and we were in line taxiing and we were there for an hour and a half. And oh, they're that, like, You yeah. can't get up, you can't do nothing. And I'm oh. like, I'm like, no, like I'm gonna get up, you know, because like this it's is such a, a tease. It's like no. you're you're there, you're ready to go, and you think you're about to go, and then you just sit there. <clears throat> blah, blah. Yeah. I got a question <clears throat> that says, I have a question. Is there any role that you regret not taking? That's a good one. I really don't say no to anything. <laughs> I can't think of the last thing I've said no to. Um, I mean, there have been audiobooks that didn't fit into my schedule, but there's not. Um, I wish I like I wish I was that popular that I was like, no, I don't have time for your project. <laughs> there's re <laughs> that's a good question, but I have I, it's just not a good. I'm trying to think if there's a, a role I regret taking. Mm -hmm. Um and there's, I don't, I'm the only thing, I mean, and I would, I would still take it, but I did a role on Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, the anime people know that. And I almost threw up while recording it because it was just so gross. Um, I played a very evil baby, Death 13, if you guys watch the show, Manish Boy. Um, and it was just gross. I would still do it again, but I was like, ooh, I wish I had known that was coming. But it was super fun anyway. Nice. That's awesome. And um, I know, I mean, conventions can be either way, right? You know, um, and I think it's awesome to get the perspective of a talent because, you know, a lot of times we've had vendors, small business organizers and stuff. You know, we've gotten those perspectives. So if I'm your part of the table, right, being the cross from the fans and stuff, what do you think was your best part of the conventions? Like, what's the part that you look forward to? Like, you hit that moment, you're like, oh, this is awesome. This is worth the delay, the travel. Yeah, and everything. Oh, it's definitely meeting the fans. Um I, they're just awesome. I, I people share their stories with me like they they because I, I know from my point of view, like the shows I grew up with just represent a very specific time in my life, even if it's not about the show so much. So people feel I, I, it's a, it's flattering and and wonderful that people feel like they can open up to me when they talk to me. Sometimes people say, "Listen, I watched Yu Gi Oh." <clears throat> during like my parents divorce and it got me through it or Pokemon, you know, was the only thing my siblings and I could agree on and it bonded us or the kids at school teased me until I brought my Pokemon cards in and, and, you know, they make themselves vul vulnerable and tell me these things and just connecting with people like that. Again, I was just a very small cog in the whole Pokemon wheel, but <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it's great to meet them. And if I can, I can tell they sometimes need to say it. It's not necessarily about me, but they need to say that and they need to talk about certain things and what the show show or shows, whatever it was meant to them. And um, I did a, I did a hosted a show on Cartoon Network called Fridays where every Friday night it was me and uh, my co-host Tommy and we would introduce all the cartoons and act silly. And they, I don't, get to talk about it a lot but for some reason this past weekend a lot of the people I met had grown up watching it and they said oh I looked forward to Friday nights and I'm like me too like it was something for kids of a certain age to do on Friday night and um I loved that like I love I miss that having appointment television like that and I love that I was part of their routine and some you know that's so cool to just get to talk to people about that stuff I feel really super lucky that I get to go to conventions and do that. That's awesome. And what would you say, like, the pinnacle? Because obviously, like, you know, given our age group, right? So we've seen, like, the Pokemon wave go up and down, right? So at the absolute height when the Pokemon movie came out, you know, I was the guy that cried, you know, Pikachu and everything. You yeah, know, was, yeah. 
I'll admit it. Then <laughs> it took a dive, right? And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, even my son right now, you know, he's 10 years old. It just shot back up. Pokemon? It's yeah. cr it's it's crazy. I mean, and I like I meet grandparents with their grandchildren. They all watch it. I I, I can't believe that we're still like when I first did that show and and all they told me that all Bulbasaur said was Bulbasaur. I was like, I'll never see these people again. And here we are, <laughs> twenty five years later. Like, I, what are the odds of being on a show like that? So, I, I it's awesome. The multi generational aspect of it is so cool. <sighs> Yeah, and now I just saw some new like Bulbasaur cards are coming out. And the artwork is beautiful, and there's, uh, and that's the thing about about Pokemon specifically is like, even if you don't watch the show, maybe you collect the cards or you play the game, or they, there's a way in for for everybody. I think um, they just they did something right with with all that. Right, multi generation. <laughs> we have JJ coming with a question saying, "What is the one role that stood out to you?" Oh gosh, it's not fair to pick one. Um, I think recently what was really cool, um, I worked on Shaman King about 15 years ago and I got to play Anna and uh, the show ended like abruptly and people didn't get the closure they wanted on the series and we didn't really finish the manga and all that. And we just did a new version of it for Netflix and now all of the episodes are out. And uh, playing her 15 years ago as opposed to now like I lived in New York when I first recorded it like I'm coming at it with a whole new perspective and they're really they really fleshed out her story um and that's unusual to get to return to a character like that so that in recent years was one that was like just stands out and was really fun for me and she's really bossy but you can tell all her bitchiness is coming from a good place so so that was fun to do you're in a safe safe, I can curse. I'm, I talk. I swear, like a uh, truck driver. So Ooh, uh, that's not fair to truck drivers. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. Do they actually curse a lot? Well, a sailor? No, I shouldn't. Uh, that's just. I don't want to generalize about sailors. <laughs> no one hears them in the sea. You're good. I'm, listen, I'm from Jersey. I swear, like someone from Jersey. How about that? <laughs> that's fair. That's awesome. We'll blame so, Jersey. Um, blame Jersey. It's funny that you mentioned the Friday thing because remember we were talking about the the deep dive into Instagram. Oh no! So, yeah. Okay. So, oh, someone in the, in the chat said sailors do curse a lot. Okay, so there you go. There you no go. judgment. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I, I fit in on a sailing vessel. So, <laughs> let's see if I can get this going here. So, I'm just gonna pull up some pictures. Maybe you can give us some context of what what was going on in you know that okay. scenario. So let's see. Oh, that's Fridays. Wow. Okay. So the top left, left, I, my, I'm bad with, with right and left. Uh, that was the very first day of work and we barely knew each other and we have to act like best friends. So luckily we ended up liking each other, but that was very awkward <laughs> because we just were like, okay. Um, we, we were kind of just thrown into it cause we needed press photos. Um, and then that was a Halloween episode, the one next to it. And I loved it. They made my hair enormous. Um, Jamila was our hair person and that must have been very fun for her to washing my hair after that was not fun uh, because that was a Halloween episode then the bottom left I don't know how you guys are seeing this so yeah. the one with Chewbacca that is actually at Skywalker Ranch um, we got to do we the, the one of the most fun things about the show is we got to interview celebrities and go to movie junkets and that was for Clone Wars. And we actually got to see it at Skywalker Ranch. And then we interviewed Chewbacca, who much like Bulbasaur didn't say much. Um, we interviewed George Lucas, Hayden Christensen. Uh, it was who Hayden Christensen, who was allergic to hay, ironically, <laughs> and had to stand and couldn't sit on the hay. So we had to stand for his interview. Um, but Skywalker Ranch was awesome. I never thought I'd get to visit there. So that was super, super cool. Um, yeah, yeah. That, and then uh, I, don't, I don't, I know Tommy was a robot in that next picture, but I don't, re I can't remember what that episode was about, but I was kind of just relieved. I didn't have to put the silver all over my face. <laughs> Because wash, yeah, and it was all through his hair. But he's awesome. He's look at Tommy Snyder. He works all the time. He's he's so talented and cool. So do you see wow, him? Is, yeah, I mean, we ran into each other not that long ago. We'll, we're more like in touch on Instagram. We'll tag each other and stuff or write a note. Um, 
sometimes we get weird, um, like stocky emails from like the same person. So <laughs> we talk about okay. it. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's awesome. He's still very funny and weird and cool. So. Awesome. Let's see. We have another oh, we do have one a quick here. Question, real quick, by Mr. Jaime Cantu. Oh, uh, hi. Is there any new hi, hi. you enjoy watching or looking forward to watching? So uh, I more look forward to working on them because watching them feel like it's like if you worked at Dunkin' Donuts, you probably wouldn't go home and eat donuts. So <laughs> when I watch, when I try to watch anime, I start watching the lip flap and I start. The voice, like it's hard for me to enjoy it, which is a bummer. But I'm really look. There's two shows I'm really looking forward to working on because I don't read the manga ahead of time, so I'm excited to see where they go. So that's uh, season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm really excited to start working on. Um, I play Udahime and Momo. I don't know how much. I know Udahime definitely has some stuff in the second season, so I'm excited to see what her storyline is. And then um, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. We are, I don't know when we're starting um, the second part of that, but hopefully soon. I'm um, excited to see that character's uh, arc in the next one. So I hope that is a good answer. I don't know. I didn't really answer it. Hi, May. Sorry. <laughs> are you one of those that you just kind of critiqued everything? Like, I would have done that better. Or, oh, I can't. Just... Oh, I can't watch my own stuff. Like, I, there's no <laughs> way. But I can't even just enjoy another show. Like, I've tried to watch other people's shows. And and listen, there's some great voice actors who I love watching. Like, I have some favorites. Um, but it just feels like work. So I watch things that are, like, just not anime at all. In my Like I said, like that jury duty show. Like, it's, like, nothing like anime. And I kind of need that to kind of just uh, just detach a little bit. Makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to get too immersed in work. The next one I have is uh, this. What's going on here? As soon as it loads, maybe <laughs> that no. is a black screen, so nothing was going on there. Nothing. Um, going on. nothing happened yeah, very little. My 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 mind was blank that time. All right, yeah. Let me try again. Technical difficulty. Now I'm nervous to see what this is gonna be. This I think this one's oh. funny. This is me. Oh yeah, I like to draw in my. <laughs> I saw a lot of these, just an FYI. Like, I'm not gonna. I have a little habit of doing that. I do love that South Park episode with Jennifer Lopez when Cartman draws Jennifer Lopez on his hand, <laughs> and then he has a whole interaction with Ben Affleck. And I, I think that's probably what inspired it. But sometimes I get bored and I just draw on myself. She needs a name. I don't have a name. I mean, they don't always look the same. But, but I, I should name my hand faces i suppose yeah, name and a voice and you're good i was about to say what voice do you use for these because i mean <laughs> if i had that talent i'd be talking to myself or to my head a lot you know it was weird. i don't do like voices in my every i don't think i do voices like there's some actors who just like slip into like start doing like especially if we're all together and we're all voice actors like most my friends and i we're not we're not like performing for each other we're sort of mm -hmm. just chill and then there's always like that one dude who's like Top of the moon and tell you. And we're like, oh God, calm. Uh, so I don't I don't tend to do that too much. Um, but she would probably sound like this. Just something breathy. Maybe she'd be southern. I don't know. She's cute. I like that picture. Okay, that was a good picture. All right. I was scared, but that was fun. Oh, let's see. I just got, got a couple more. 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 <laughs> I mean, they're not bad. I promise no, you. This game is fun. Right? Yeah, so, I like this game. This is the only thing I won't prep anybody for. Let's see. If, hopefully this one pulls up the first time. Or something look really Let's bad see. on my part. It's okay. just a with bated breath. Oh. Oh. Okay. So that is me drilling a hole into a D20 die. Um, I, I, have, I accidentally started a jewelry company. I was just making too much jewelry. And um, my friend Sam Regal, who is part of Critical Role, all of you who geek out to uh, D and D will know who that is. He's like, "Hey, you're making all this jewelry. Why don't you do some dice jewelry?" And I was like, "All right, I'll try." And there was a lot of trial and error trying to drill dice. Um, and now I'm, I'm, I can say I'm pretty good at drilling. Um, but I bought this little drill press and all this stuff and like all different drill bits. And so that is me putting a hole into that D20, which I know is like blasphemous for cer certain people. I think I probably got some appalled reactions to that. But that's the, that's, I think it's called like a vice grip or something that I put the dice into. 
I get a lot of drill bits stuck in the dice. So then I have a whole slew of just unusable dice with drill bits. And do Maybe you still sell the, sell these uh, actively? Because I yeah, yeah. popped this up. There was a whole catalog there and everything. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. So I uh, it's on Etsy. I have a shop called Looped LA. And there's all different dice jewelry. Yeah. I'm yeah. not like as active, like I, I, but I have a bunch of stuff that's still for sale on there. Yeah. Nice. And do you do you play a lot of D and D? Just you know. I've never played. <laughs> <laughs> never I've never I, even your own supply. No, I I don't even know how to. I I've watched little bits of of Sam's show of Critical Role. I don't know how to play. It's not my like. Listen, I'm plenty geeky, but it's just not. That's not my uh, geekiness. I'm more of like a crossword puzzle geek. Uh, but yeah, I should probably learn at some point. I'm. <laughs> I'm going to watch Stranger Things. I've only seen season one. I I feel like if I watch Stranger Things, it will inspire me to want to play. Is that, do you think that's true? Or did I, am I crazy? I mean, I always yeah, saw season yeah, two. The majority of the, the characters are based off the D&D, but. Uh, but they I've play on the show, things. right? Like they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Okay. All right. Not too bad. I got one more left. Okay. Okay. So, let's see what the context of this one. Please though, the first time. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I don't even... I'm guessing that was a service dog at a convention. I don't even know. The, but what's more important is the really cute Bulbasaur hat behind me. And I guess that tattooed arm is the dog's owner? I mean, yeah, because it has that thing around it, so it must be a service dog, right? Sometimes at conventions, they'll even like, like have a dog in like the green room. Like I, I, yeah, I, I don't have my own dog, but I like other people's dogs a lot. That same, absolutely the same. Yeah, <laughs> that is a really cute puppy. If you Aww. need a dog for the groom, I got a real hyper dog. I got you. All right. Well, well, is it big? Because I'm short, and they will just it's murder me. It's a, oh, it's, it's a little a, puppy. It's a miniature schnauzer. <gasps> oh. It's always what's, it's, what's what's the, give me the name. I need the name. That's more important. Uh, Bellatrix. Oh, oh, isn't that that's a Harry Potter name, right? Yeah, my fiance is a really big Harry Potter fan, so she name. named the dog under Bellatrix. That's a really good name. That's, you call her Bella for short, right? Yeah, we call or her. Or do Bella. you say the whole name every single time? When we angry at her, we call her Bellatrix. <laughs> then we call her Bella. Does she have a middle name? Uh no, 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 no. Oh, she needs a really long middle name because then <laughs> when you get back, like many syllables. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cute. And then right. just to kind of wrap up the, the time, because I know we were on a time frame here. I know, um, I'm sorry. I just want to share these last two things. Maybe <laughs> you can walk us through what they are. You know, maybe. So. <laughs> oh, wow. This is very exciting. In uh, August, at the end of August, I will be coming to Mercedes, Texas. Um, I don't know. I think that's south near McAllen. Am I correct? It's uh, about 30 minutes from McAllen. So. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm getting my Texas geography. Um, I'm going to be at uh, All Valley Collectors Expo. Is that the name? That's the name of it. And uh, yeah. I'll be signing stuff. Um, I think we'll be posting prices and all that stuff soon. Um, I know you guys will have uh, Funko Pops for sale. So you guys don't have to find your own. You guys will have them to sell there. Um, I'll also have like prints and cards and stuff to sign. And uh, just come hang out uh, 12 to 7. And then the next day. In case you ca are not free on that Saturday, it gets yeah. better. Or come both days. Wait, there's more. Wait, there's <laughs> more. Yeah, I'm putting the picture on me. Now I'm picture. Yeah. So on Sunday, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, uh, I will be at your store, The Collector, in Edinburgh. Um, that's a shorter day, 11 to 2.30. So uh, if you can't come Saturday, come Sunday or come for both days and hopefully we'll still have pops and stuff available. I think we should, cause you just ordered a lot of the Bisky pops. Mm -hmm. So yes. definitely uh, pick up your Bisky pops there and um, I'll write whatever you want on there. Um, I mean, not anything. I mean, within reason, like nothing, <laughs> like nothing offensive, uh, but yeah, so I'm excited. I haven't been, I haven't been to Texas in a minute, so I'm excited to go back. Awesome. Well, we appreciate your time and everything. Um, well, me and Fred will probably stay <laughs> on to the podcast. Uh, so you have the XE, right? Loop Delay. Um, if Loop you're looking for the, the D20 yeah. dice. So, even Thank if you're you not a fan. You can play yeah. no more, but you got jewelry now. 
<laughs> yeah, and check out. So your store, uh, your website should have all the info for the um, event. You're on Facebook, and then I'll post all the info for the events on my Instagram and Twitter, which is just Tara Sands LA, in case you need the address and all that stuff. You know, don't just yell, where's the collector? Um, it's probably better to actually have the address. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, you also have your <laughs> Facebook page, right? That thing is Tara Sands voiceovers as well. If they want to follow yeah. you. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's Tara Sands LA now. I might have updated it, but it might be Tara Sands voiceover. I don't know. I've just been tagging the same one, so. I, I oh, it says Tara Sands voiceover, but like it's weird because if you want to find it, it's under Tara Sands LA. Facebook is weird. I don't know. I'm I'm ever, I'm pretty easy to find. You can just go to TaraSands.com and then it'll have links. I don't know. You guys are more savvy than I am with that stuff. Right, sometimes, but thank you so much. That was so much fun. I that Instagram game was really cool. Awesome, I appreciate it very much. So, excuse me. All right, um, I'm gonna peace out. I thank you very much. Thank you, you guys. I'll see you soon. All right, (laughs) bye. All right, guys. So, that was exciting. So, um, for everyone that stayed with us, guys, appreciate it. So, we got Terra Sands coming to the All Valley Collectors Expo on August 26th. There is a five dollar entry charge for that at Las Las Lanos Las Las God, Las Lanas Las Lanas Las Lanas Las Lanas, Las Lanas Event Center, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's in Mercedes. It's in Mercedes, guys. Mercedes. Mercedes. I didn't want to say it wrong over there. Yeah. So it's gonna be an All Valley Collectors Expo, August twenty six. Come meet Miss Bubblesore slash Bisky slash. I think she's a young. Uh, when are we dropping prices? Um. Oh, what up, Miguel? So we can actually drop the prices. Uh, La, 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 I'm sorry, I'm bro. I can't speak Spanish. How's Lano. it? Lano. 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 Lano Event Center. Boom. Lano Event Center. There you go. Lano. Um, got you. Got you, Mando. Isaiah, we'll drop the prices here in a minute. So, um, kind of the way the Facebook advertising works is, uh, to get maximum like reach and stuff, we we run like one ad at a time. Uh, this event, obviously, we have to run two ads, All Valley and ours. So um, on that post, we'll post the prices. We also have an event tab. So if you go to the Facebook event, it'll be on there. And you guys can see the prices there. Um, I think it's like $40 for an autograph uh, combo, 10 bucks for a picture. It's kind of like your normal con pricing. I can't hear, Mondo. You're, you're, you're typing it, man. But it's no, no audio. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's <laughs> like, Lando, Lando. Bro, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Why am I getting yelled at? <laughs> you can type with how many L's you want, bro. It's yeah, Lando, so- Lando, one of them. <laughs> and I know the beginning of it was kind of quick, guys, but one of the biggest things is that uh, Tara did have a prior, um, I guess, a voice class that she was taking care of. So we wanted to make sure gringos, <laughs> we want to make sure she made the, the burros. burros. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's more offensive. You're calling me I could, a gringo? Or I could word? read that. <laughs> <laughs> I may not be able to pronounce it, but I could read it. Uh, but yeah, man, um, it was fun having her here. I'm excited for. August 26th, if you have your, oh, yeah, no, there you, there you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, hey, bro. No. That's how you got to do it, bro. That's Yano, how you got to do it. The Yano event. <laughs> <laughs> the Yano. Yeah, man, but uh, we have, we have a lot of bubble stores in stock. We have a lot of, we're getting biscuits. We're, we're getting a lot of merchandise where you guys get signed, have a good experience, Mr. Terra Sands. Uh, so, um, we got yeah. some. We got the 25 anniversary silvers. We got the regulars. Uh, and then we, we have, have a like couple one, of flock ones. One the, or two flock ones. What's the other one? The fluorescent or whatever? Oh, yeah. We have one or two fluorescents. We got a couple flock ones. And I we think we even have cards, a diamond one. Bulk cards for days. Yeah. But I know she's um, bringing cards too, but just in case. Oh, she she's also enough, bringing prints, cards, and oh, andale, mexicanos. Andale. It's a double yeah, L. Double think L, Y. Think Y. Um, you know, you guys are very, very pushy today, but I like it. Oh, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, feel, I feel targeted right now. Yeah, but but um, I'm not saying I'm white. I'm just saying that yeah. I've been in North Dakota North for Dakota's a change you, David. Yeah, a little bit slightly. Slightly <laughs> changed you. <laughs> You're becoming more Anglo by the minute. <laughs> um, and for everybody that stayed on, guys, it was great. I mean, hopefully we can get her on, you know, afterwards, further down the line when she starts doing the, I know that she talked about that new release coming out on Netflix and Hulu. Um, but definitely guys um, like and share the event even if you're not going to go to the event I know there's a lot of things going on that weekend um, but this is one of the things that we had promised a couple years ago it fell through um, then it came in we need to represent a valley 
We need to represent El Valle. El Valle. What's, I know. What's, Valle. Not, what's not Davos? No Davos. No, no Davos. No. God bless. I feel like, I, oh, no Sabo. Sabo. <laughs> Sabo. Bro, hey, look, they're, they're fucking with us now. They're fucking with us now. <laughs> I'm going to put Yano. Yano. <laughs> <laughs> Sabo, so. Sabo. Hey, just because you type it over and over, <laughs> I'm gonna get it right. We still don't understand it, bro. Stop trying. Stop there trying. you go. What do you want me to do? <laughs> nah, man. But yeah, hopefully, um, hopefully you guys could be. A... Man, he no meant Sabo, no Sabo ah, kids. Like we don't know kids. We don't know kids. That's what I mean. Oh, Sabo is like kind of like slang for we don't know. Oh, uh, so you calling me stupid? I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> at least stay to our faces we're good right but uh yeah man hopefully if you guys uh be able to join us um be sure to share the when you guys see us post it you sharing the interaction all that kind of stuff guys we appreciate that i know we've been getting a lot of love with the events and the photos we've been posting so hopefully it continues but yeah we're excited man we're excited this will be i think it's gonna be a good time i'm unfortunately not gonna be there for i'm gonna still be in north dakota but you jay ash i think i could be able to run it really well so yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So, should we, we tell them what we have in the future, or what we're doing in October, or should we just kind of hold on to that? Um, we could talk. It's it's approved. We just gotta come up with a contract, but That's it's true. approved. But Mer- so we're actually um now that we were able to kind of uh, I think it's actually the podcast that's been helping, bro. Because I think they go into like our social medias, you know. Um, but we're actually reach out to another voice actor guy. So we're gonna have another signing coming up. In October. So before we go to the whole, everybody does everything in October. The la. Um, we're probably gonna have another one. We haven't decided if we're gonna do the convention or in shop yet. We kind of trying to finalize that. Um, but it's, I think it's gonna be something cool, something different. I don't think they've been here, right, friend, or no? Uh, I don't think they've been here. I, no, no. I know, been the, to... I know the other one was here. The more popular. Yeah, one. the other one was here, but the the other one, one was here, one wasn't. <laughs> Yeah. But that's gonna be a good one. So if you guys like anime, we're gonna try to bring more anime. Uh, I mean, obviously we got Hunter X Hunter, Bulbasaur. I mean, people know. Do I know it? Do you know, Do it, you know it? Does he know I, it? Did you talk I to Jay? You well, didn't we tell haven't your talked brother. To we haven't talked to Jay yet. You've hey, been Jay. busy. You've been asleep. That's true. It took you like four days to get the flyers printed, Jay. <laughs> Damn it. So. But, but uh, I'll text you right now, Jake. You got it. I'll, I'll oh, text you. It. Dicks, what you talking about? What you like? Ha, got him, <laughs> got him. <laughs> all Pokemon, all Parangers have been here. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I mean, not all Pokemon have been here because there's like yeah, a whole we're, like we're seeing, I've been seeing like the Dan Green, the Mewtwo. That would be a good mm-hmm. one to get. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think it's cool. I think it's different, man. Because like what we talked about before, right? You know, Pokemon, like everything, bro. Everything has a high and a low, right? Like Power Rangers, bro. Go. I boom, just texted boom, to JJ. Boom. He hasn't. He hasn't been here. Uh, okay, makes sense. So he's not in the valley. Can and we? It's a, it's a good addition because I know that anime. It's a. It's, it's right now. It's really, really popular of that anime, and uh, he's like kind of one of the main characters. We don't want to spoil it too much until we get it signed and uh, get everything already situated. But uh, yeah, um, hopefully you guys will be excited. Uh, we're bringing this talent because I know you guys have been requesting it. Um. Don't forget, guys, it's not cheap. It yeah. does cost Team Blastoise. Nobody likes Blastoise. Ban that man. <laughs> Ban that man. All about, all about Bubble Sore. You know why George picked uh, Blastoise? Because it's wet. And he has a wet. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I like turtles, bro. I'm a big Blastoise fan, bro. Like, honestly. I'm a. I'm you're a not big gonna, Blastoise. You're fan, not going to lie on this podcast and tell me that your damn starter Pokemon was Squirtle, bro. Come on. I'm big into turtles, bro. You did not pick fucking anime Bronco. <laughs> That's funny. You did, bro. I'll be transparent, bro. My starter Pokemon was Charmander, bro. You know that. That's everybody's, bro. I, I, I'm anime Bronco. There you go. We got anime Bronco. The, Campos, um, the other is Charmander. What's it called? Nah, dude. I, I got Blasters. I was a big. You can't even ask JJ. I always loved turtles since I was a kid, and I would get a uh, Squirtle. I will get my ass kicked all the time because everybody had to fucking. <laughs> everybody had ground. Oh, Pokemon had Squirtle. That's funny. Hey, bro, that's a question we got to ask Tara, bro. What was your starter Pokemon? I'm going to laugh if she picked Bulbasaur, bro. I'm going to laugh if she didn't pick Bulbasaur even more, bro. Straight up. <laughs> she would be like, I walked all the way to the back and got Pikachu. 
<laughs> Remember back then those glitches? I wonder, like, if you wouldn't pick the three Pokemons, another Pokemon would pop by and it would be Pikachu. Yeah. I didn't know any about that stuff. I didn't have internet, so I just picked the three. Uh, I'm surprised you even had the console to fucking play it. Because <laughs> oh, I stole it. <laughs> nah, my, my older brothers did a good job making sure that we didn't look poor. <laughs> or I didn't think we were poor. Bulbasaur was the weakest, bro. Bulbasaur was the weakest. Shh. And then my Blanco. We got Blanco. Levi Red Fox with the Levy Red Fox. Hmm. We got Mario. The, hmm. You caught thing. You caught thing. Who are we bringing? Who are we bringing? It'll be a good one. I mean, I think uh, it'll be good. This one's like working out good. See you Saturday out there, Armando. So we'll get these clips out here in a minute. I gotta do the reels and stuff. So hey, uh, what's what time do y'all open Saturday? <laughs> 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 We're writing solo. I need to know. Oh, I mean, that's true. <laughs> what time do you guys? I think it's ten o'clock. Oh, okay. <laughs> 10. So Pokemon Yellow, you were able to get all the starters and Pikachu. Damn. So, but um, one, two, three, four, five. Yano, 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 the Yano Ooh. Event Center. We're not that old, <laughs> Damn. Isn't George older? I think George is the youngest one, bro. George is younger than me. George is it? Well. Well, again, everybody, guys, we appreciate you guys sticking with the podcast. We're going to go ahead and end this one early. I know we usually run an hour, guys. I mean, we're not going to lie. Bulk of the traffic wanted to hear Tara. I, I wouldn't blame you guys. So, yeah. Um, definitely catch us on the next week's podcast. Um, another one that we're going to reach out to is another voice actor that's been here a minute or so um, that we've probably put on contract to. The other one that, that reached out to us. So. Um, just an FYI, guys. So hopefully we can get some more talent on here. I think that's kind of cool. To me personally, I think the perspective of like the talent, bro. Because as vendors, we know what it looks like, and as you know, the what's it called as buyers, right? Yeah. But, I mean, imagine sitting on the other side of the table, bro. Like having to like interact, sign stuff, and I mean, damn, you know, it's different. Yeah. Like so, imagine talking to Sean Shemo, be like, "Hey, uh, how was that nine-hour line that you had? Like, <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel sitting there?" <laughs> Nine freaking hours getting judged. Get Johnny Depp. We uh, bro, <laughs> you got a couple million. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. See um, you. But, uh, see you, fellas, on Saturday. You definitely see Fred on Saturday for sure. <laughs> I will be there. If you want to come around, help me around the table, bro. I got you. Yeah. But uh, all right, guys. Well, we appreciate everybody uh, staying on here. What do we got? Sean and Chris, right? Imagine going out with those guys, bro. That's gonna be a fun evening. So. But there was like a handful of questions I didn't get to ask. Got that Got Amber Heard money. <laughs> so everybody's a hater these days. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Make sure you stay tuned for next week's podcast, guys. Uh, we'll hopefully get some contacts in the next week. If not, we'll just uh, keep doing some more teasing. And make sure you guys follow uh, the All Valley Collectors Expo group. And then also, of course, our page will be announcing pricing soon. And besides that... Uh, have a wonderful day, guys. Right? So, see ya. When I wanna be ya.